Okay, here we are in Photoshop with the three shots that I picked out. And we're going to start with the one on bottom, so I'll minimize these top two. Uh, drag this one up, stretch it out, and then I'll zoom in on it a little bit to have a better look. Uh, we're going to need to crop it because, as you can tell, we've got this blank space to the top and blank space to the left. So to tighten up the composition, we really need to crop it a bit. So image crop. That looks good. Now we can downsize it to 800 by whatever and zoom in on it to 100 percent. Now pretty much everything I do is under this image adjustments menu. I usually start with uh, the brightness contrast and you just want to go off of whatever your eye tells you looks best. Um, maybe a little less contrast. Okay. And also filter sharpen smart sharpen is something I do with pretty much every shot. Uh, I just use the default settings for this and it just adds a very subtle sharpening effect. It's nothing too overpowering as you can tell. Also filter uh, distort diffuse glow adds like a dreamy effect. I don't use this on every shot but uh, I do use it from time to time. And again just use your your eyes best judgment. You can see the difference there. Um, I also tend to adjust the exposure level quite a bit. And I, I typically spend about five minutes on every shot that I, that I uh, adjust. <clears throat> but most of that is just tinkering, and you know, toying with different filters like the lighting effects here, and um, just you know, playing with different settings to try and achieve you know something that that is visually appealing. So that's really the best advice I can give you is to go through those two menus: the image adjustments menu and anything under the filter menu to try and um, see what what you think looks good and go from there. Shadow highlights is another one that I sometimes will adjust. Highlights can really mess with it so be careful with that. Um, color balance is another one I I like to mess with. Uh, right now I'm adjusting the midtones. You can also do the shadows again just going off of whatever I think looks best and you can also um, adjust the highlights again just experiment you know slide these these sliders back and forth and just try to find the the middle ground where you think that looks good okay I like that so uh, more to be done in the image adjustments menu. Back to the exposure level. Yeah, this just adds a little bit more of a uh, a little bit a little bit brighter light there, as you can see. And then uh, raising the gamma will offset that with the shadowing. Uh, also, I'm going to want to blur these trees a little bit. I don't I don't always blur, but um, you know, you, when you have these these crisp edges in the clouds or in the trees, then it it really makes it all look a little bit better if you take out the blur tool and uh, soften that up a little bit. Do -do. Okay, that's that's good enough there. Now. Um, ready to save. I like to keep the quality level um, to where the file size is under 200 kilobytes or thereabouts. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Expand that out. Zoom in on it and get a closer look. Again, this one's going to need to be cropped as well. That's not going to work, so yeah, we'll Try that again. That'll be good. So image crop, and then downsize it to 800 by whatever, and zoom in 100%. Again, image adjustments, brightness, contrast. You can tell this is, you know, a little bit different than the last picture. So just goes to show everyone is different. Filter, sharpen, smart sharpen, and back to the exposure. I'm 
using this uh, diffuse glow again. Like I said, I don't I don't normally use that. Just uh, it's an occasional thing, but um, I don't know. For in this case, I think it it looks good. You can see the difference there. Back to color balance. You know, don't be afraid to mess with these settings because that's really the best way to learn. Um, just to tinker with these things and uh, go off of whatever, whatever you think looks good. Also, photo filters can really come in handy. Um, I just shuffle through them, as you can see. Uh, sepia is one I tend to use a lot. Back to this diffuse glow. I don't think I'm going to use that. Alright, now the match color luminance is something that I use uh, pretty often as well. It can really brighten up your shots. Uh, you can also mess with the color intensity, but you want to be careful not to overdo that or underdo it. Just uh, use it lightly. Uh, under the hue saturation, if you lower the saturation a little bit, that can uh, give you like a, a little bit colder tone to your shot. Also, if you select all and then uh, do a layer via copy, you can then add effects to that top layer. Like what I like to do is this motion blur and then lower the opacity. As you can see, that. Um, it kind of adds to that dreamy effect I was talking about earlier. Just toy with the opacity and find uh, a nice middle ground there. Okay, um, let's try let's try a gradient map. See what see what happens there. A black and white gradient map can uh, kind of change the tone of the shot sometimes. But I'm not really liking that so. I'm just going to hit cancel. Whoops. Let's adjust the brightness contrast a little bit. I think I'll brighten that up a little bit. Okay. Now you can see the difference between the original and where we're at now. But I think I'm going to blur out this tree on the right hand side. If I select the right layer. Uh, just to soften up all those hard edges, those can be pretty distracting if you just leave them the way they are. So, uh, anytime I have a, a couple free minutes, I like to just blur these out a little bit, like so. It's kind of tedious, but I think it uh, it ends up being worth it. I'm going to adjust the brightness contrast a little bit more. Not quite happy with where it is right now. Alright. Now again, the original and where we're at. So I like it. Save it. Again, I like to keep mine. My shots usually uh, at or around 200 kilobytes. We're at 240. Lower that and we're at 194. So I'll save it. Okay. Now on to this third one.